Today, let's talk about the quantum model of the atom. Back then, the most acceptable model of the atom is what we call the shell model which shows how electrons are located in exact places known as shells. These shells are useful in identifying the energy of electrons. An electron residing on the first shell has lower energy than the electron in the second shell. The idea is the farther an electron to the nucleus, the higher its energy. But scientists have discovered that electrons have uncertainties, which led to the enhancement of the shell model to quantum mechanical model. But it is good to remember that the shell model can still be useful, especially when predicting certain properties of the atom. According to the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the position and velocity of an object cannot be determined at the same time. Now this principle is found to be applicable to electrons, which means the position of electrons are uncertain, or to simply say it, we cannot identify the exact location of electrons. What we can do is to identify the area where we can possibly find it or find them. Think of it this way. Between the two clouds, which one do you think carries more rain? Well, generally speaking, the darker the cloud, the more rain it contains. Same as with the quantum mechanical model. In this model, for example, the darker region represents the highest possibility of finding the electrons. The lighter region, on the other hand, represents the, less the least possibility of finding the electrons. Now, this entire area where we can find electrons is what we call orbital. The quantum mechanical model uses what we call quantum numbers. Now, what are these quantum numbers? Quantum numbers are used to determine the characteristics of the orbitals. Again, remember that orbitals are the places or regions where we can find electrons. And quantum numbers can be used to describe the size, the shape, and the orientation of orbitals. Likewise, quantum numbers can also be used to determine the characteristics of electrons in relation to the orbitals such as their energy and the spin now we have actually four quantum numbers but in this video we will only use two which are the n which is the principal quantum number it tells us the size of the orbital and the l which is the angular momentum quantum number which tells us the shape of the orbital so the n tells us how big the region can be for the for finding electrons while the l tells us the shape of that region the n tells us the size or how big the area for finding the electrons we use the numbers one two three four and so on and so forth as long as it's a whole number to represent the n the idea is the larger the n, the larger the size of the orbital. The smaller the n, then the smaller the size for finding the electrons. The L tells us the shape of the orbital. And we use the letters S, P, D, and F to represent the L or the shapes. The S orbital has a spherical shape, the p orbital has a dumbbell shape, the d orbital has most likely to have a clover shape, while the 
F orbital has a very complex shape. That's why I did not include it here in this slide. Now, the letters can go beyond F. But as of the 118 elements in the periodic table of elements, no atoms have reached beyond the F orbital so far. Now, I want you to remember this. An atom can have more than one orbital shapes. It depends on the size of the atom or the value of the N. Now take a look at this table. This table summarizes the possible shapes of orbitals in terms of the size of the orbital. For example, if the value of n is 1, then there can only be one orbital shape, and that is the s orbital. If n is equal to 2, then there are two possible orbital shapes, which are the s and the p. And if n is equal to 3, then we can have s, p, and d orbitals. Now that's it for today's, for today's video. I hope you were able to visualize more what an atom looks like and how this quantum mechanical model helps us to identify the location and the energy of electrons. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Tell me that you love me, even if